ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಗುಣಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂ ಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ದಿಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ನಾವು ವಿ ವಿ ಮೂವ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ ಕಡಿ the state of self realization self realized person a self realized person is one who has discovered his godhead realized the supreme self atman attained that divine state by shedding all his vasanas thoughts desires he no longer identifies with his physical body mind and intellect consequently becomes free from the persecution of action and perception emotion and thought transcends the limitations of waking dream and deep sleep states to merge with limitless reality spiritually enlightened he becomes omniscient omnipresent omnipotent a human being is constituted of the pure consciousness combined with gross subtle and causal bodies the consciousness functioning through these bodies becomes the waker dreamer deep sleeper and deep sleeper respectively the waking dream deep sleep are the three conditioned states of consciousness your entire life is restricted to these three these states at any time of your life you assume only one of the three personalities when you enter the waking state you assume the personality of the waker the waker experiences the waking world alone and rejects the dream and deep sleep deep sleep states so do the dreamer and the deep sleeper experience their respective states and reject the other two each state exists only for the respective personality experiencing it who alone attributes a reality to it but not the other two personalities hence each one has a relative reality the consciousness consciousness runs through all the three states of waking dream and deep sleep furthermore the consciousness exists beyond the three states in its original purity free from the conditioning that supreme consciousness is eternal all pervading infinite the self realized merge with the consciousness becomes one with the absolute reality the consciousness consciousness is the substratum of the microcosm as well as the macrocosm the entire the center around with both both of them revolve the microcosm and macrocosm merge with the eternal consciousness continue mm-hmm. is intrinsic being a self realized person as merged with the supreme reality he manifests divine characteristics displays ex- exceptional power bears universal love possesses boundless knowledge he enjoys absolute self sufficiency reveals in total fulfillment is power selfish activity as limited power if you work with ego and ego centric desires if your actions are directed towards personal gains your work becomes limited lacks efficiency dynamism drop your selfishness renounce your egoistic tendency pitch up a higher goal in life a nobler class an ideal bear you are self centered interest let your activities be directed to this set ideal let your work turn impersonal your actions then become efficient dynamic they produce results you command power strength let an employee approach his employer for a personal favor with a selfish desire to fulfill he hesitates falters fumbles he lacks strength to put forth his case let the same person take up a common cause to serve the interest of his fellow employees he then approaches the boss with a higher purpose with no personal motive in it his impersonal attitude provides him courage and strength his action becomes powerful his effort fruitful apply this principle in life annihilate your ego get rid of your little self you gain power and strength 
your activity assumes infinite propositions that determines the power of a self realized question in the invocation to the gita a verse describes the power of a spiritual evolved it makes a mute speak a lame scale mountains the dhyana shlokas of the bhagavad gita upam karoti vachalam pangum langayate gire etrupatam aham vande paramananda madhav that's the verse it makes a mute speak a lame scale mountains it makes a mute speak a lame scale mountains his intrinsic being a self realized person's intrinsic being intrinsic being means his inner his inner state what you need to understand is some indications of his inner state is given to inspire us don't restrict it to these indicators alone these are all very broad indicators given to inspire us to get to the state of self realization you you have to study it you have to understand it study it from that perspective for the intrinsic being of a self realized person is beyond a description first why it is beyond description brahma vit brahmaiva bhavati the knower of brahman has become brahman the knower of brahman becomes brahman if we can describe a self realized person you can describe brahman if brahman cannot be described self realized person also is beyond description and yet these indicators are given so these indicators gives you a broader a very broad picture of his internal of his internal state the first thing in that internal state is the power more selfish and self centered you are less power more unselfish more the power him being selfless he has absolute power selfishness no power unselfishness more selflessness absolute since a self realized person is an is absolutely selfless his power is absolute since we cannot understand what is that absolute power he gives an example of selfishness and unselfishness the example that is given here is one of selfishness and unselfishness what is it let an employee approach his employer for a personal favor with a selfish desire to fulfill he hesitates falters comes that is selfishness wherever there is selfishness there will be a hesitation there will be faltering there will be there will be a fumble he lacks strength to put forth his case let the same person take up a common cause to serve the interest of the fellow employees he then approaches the boss with a higher purpose with no personal motive in it his impersonal attitude provides him courage and strength so unselfishness brings power the attitude of unselfishness brings power in that at with that unselfish attitude here we are talking about selflessness here we are talking about absolute here we are here he is referring to the absolute absolute power how to describe the absolute power example can talk about the selfish and unselfish 
how to talk about the absolute power. That's where the Gita Dhyana Sloka comes in. Mukam Karoti Pachalam Pangum Langayate Girim. Giri means mountain. It makes a mute speak, a lame scale, mountains. It makes a mute speak, it makes a lame scale, mountains. How can a mute speak? Impossible. How can a lame person scale mountains? Impossible. And yet, because of the absolute power that the state of self-realization confers, the impossible things become possible. The most impossible thing becomes possible. In that sense, absolute power. What is the most impossible thing? Renouncing the egoistic tendency. What is the most impossible thing? What is it? What is it that is difficult to let go? The egoistic tendency. The, the, the ego is difficult to to let go because letting go of the ego is letting go of the individuality. Letting go of the ego is almost like committing suicide, and it is it is difficult to let go of the ego. You know the Puranic story, Bhaman Avatara, where, where, the, where uh, Mahavishnu, Lord Vishnu took the form of the Vamana, uh, the short boy who came and asked for Mahabali, the king, was doing one Yajna. Yajna means what? Yajna means, what is Yajna? Sacrifice, you give. So Yajna means, you announce that I, if you announce, uh, please don't announce, sir. Uh, because if any one of you announce, I will be the first person to come. Yeah. Yajna, I am doing Yajna means what? Those days they announce, I am doing Yajna. And when it is announced, I am doing Yajna means what? Whoever comes and asks for whatever they want, you have to, you have to give. Yeah. Don't really, I'm not saying don't do, I'm saying you will not do. Huh? Please understand. I'm not saying you can't do. I'm not saying don't do. Even if it is told to do, you will not, you will not do. That's a different story. Mahapali did yajna. Mahabali did yajna and he did yajna in the true sense of the term, he did yajna. What is yajna in the true sense of the term? Whoever comes and asks for what, whatsoever they ask for, they will be everybody came, he was giving and then Vamana Vishnu, Lord Vishnu took the form of Vamana. Vamana means short form. Vamana means short. Short. So he took a short form, three feet height. Three feet height. Small boy. He took that form and he entered the Yajna Shala. And the Mahabali told, whatever you want is given. You make an announcement that you are doing yajna. And then each and every person comes into the yajna shala. What, you, what will you say? What are you supposed to say? You are so, so, so scared even to say that. What are you supposed to say? Ijay Rangan. What are you supposed to say? Whoever comes into the yajna shala. What do you want? No, that you should not ask that. You should not say that. 
what you what should you say whatsoever you have come for is granted now tell me what you what do you want he may ask for your house he may ask for your wife he may ask for your children he may ask for your life whatsoever is asked you are supposed to you are supposed to give that's what happened in katopanishad again yeah, that's what happened in katopanishad to whom are you going to give me as a gift nachiketa is went and asked his father because in yagna means you are supposed to give. you can't ask what do you want and then decide whether to give or not it means what you have mentally renounced to give up then only you will start an yagna if you have not mentally renounced to give up you you can never start a yagna so this person started the yagna mahabali and vamana ke his guru shukracharya told vam uh, told the king mahabali don't give to this man don't give to this boy because you don't know who he is you don't know who he is don't give don't give don't commit because whatsoever you have come for is granted na it is a commitment and uh, he said don't don't commit don't commit like that for you have already so much of commitments no yeah you have already so much of commitments he will added i this is a, this yagna and this man becomes another commitment why his guru said don't take up commitment mahabali said no having decided to do the yagna whatsoever is come for it is given tatastu granted mahabali said given and then he asked vamana what do you want he said i want 3 feet land 3 feet land measurement 3 feet according to whose feet according to whose feet vamana said my feet i will measure mahabali said you are a small boy and you and your three feet is and your i have told this a few times i don't know whether you have observed it or not in the market you will always notice the shortest hand will be measured the flower the shortest hand at least now observe next time when you go to the yeah sometimes they will ask the child to measure as they strike a conversation with you why because short hand no if you have a long hand if a person like uh, no if a person of the height of um, Swami ji, a uh, six-foot fellow starts measuring. What will happen? Moon world, like he'll become a bondi, no? He'll become bankrupt. So short. So Mahabali said, "Your feet is so small. If you measure, what will you get out of that three feet? What will you get out of that three feet? So I will give you three villages. I will give you three cities. I will give you three. You want three? No, I will give you three." but i will decide what the tree is vamana said nothing according to my feet mahabali said granted tatastu and then immediately what happened he became the he took the vishwarupa darshan he took the vishwarupa darshan one feet he measured the one feet he measured the the known second feet he measured the unknown and then he is looking at mahabali and asking where is the third feet you said three rendu da irukudhu inga where is the where is the third feet and uh, mahabali prostrated to him and said my head my head is the third feet why because the ego of mine is so big that it is much much bigger than the known and the unknown the ego of a human being is so big so big 
that bigger than the universe, bigger than the multiverse. That's what he says here. Why I gave all this Mahabali story is power is directly related to the egoistic tendency. More egoistic you are, less powerful you are. More unselfish you are, more powerful you become. And if you turn selfless, you have absolute power. Remember Mahabali story. For absolute power, remember the story of See, when he was measuring the first step itself, Mahabali and his earth is already accounted, no? How can he put his head and say, my, 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 my head is the place for the third feet? It's not literal, it is symbolic. What is it? The, the ego. And what is ego means? What is ego? In the relative sense, an exaggerated notion that you have about yourself is ego. In the absolute sense, you are convinced that you are an individual is ego. Ego can be understood in two ways. At one level, ego means an exaggerated notion that you have about yourself. Superiority or inferiority? Now, in this context, we don't mean ego in that sense. What we mean by ego in this context here is the sense of individuality. That is ego. You believe, you are convinced that you are an individual. What is renouncing that egoistic tendency means? renouncing the tendency that you are and you are an individual. If you are renouncing your individuality and your ego, automatically you will not be bothered about the ego of the others. You will be affected and bothered about the ego of the others only when you have an ego. When you don't have an ego, how can you be bothered about the ego of in fact, when you have renounced your ego, incidentally what happens? When your ego is renounced, straight away you understand others also have no ego. It's only an imagination. And when somebody is imagining and, and when somebody is living on imagination, you only sympathize with that person. You will not get affected, you will not get tense, you will not be stressed. Somebody is imagining and will you be stressed about that person's imagination? will only sympathize. That's how the wise man, the enlightened person looks at us. So what is ego? What is renouncing the ego means? Renouncing the sense of renouncing the sense of individuality. That is ego. That is renouncing the ego. The moment you renounce your ego, straight away you will understand what There is no ego anywhere around you also. You, you cannot say, sir, I have no ego, sir, but others have ego, know what to do. If you are asking that question, means you have not understood what ego is and you have not renounced your ego. Sir, I have no ego, sir, but uh, others' ego only I am bothered. I have no ego, but others have ego, know what can... Uh, what, what should I do about others' ego, sir? If you don't have an ego, in, instantly the ego of others also is dropped. That's what, the, that's what the state of absolute power itself is. This is his intrinsic being. There are a few qualities in his intrinsic being and uh, we stop with the power today. We stop with 
for today and then we'll continue the love and whatsoever is going to talk about the the love the boundless knowledge absolute self sufficiency total fulfillment all his intrinsic being each and every quality we will study individually expands in his intrinsic being for today absolute power absolute power because no no ego please understand it is not the ego becoming powerful the dropping of ego gives you power it's not the ego becoming see, see generally what we think powerful means me as an individual will become more and more powerful no so here it is exactly the opposite dropping the ego is that what power itself is and his intrinsic being is such that he has absolute power with this we conclude uh, the intrinsic being for today and uh, this is uh, this is exclusively for uh, this is exclusively for shankar then you may ask why are you saying in the class why can't you call him and say him in private others also need to know for this is something that i have to tell him before you sit in the class for reading the paragraph you read a few times second is listen to the audio listen to the audio book of swami ji is reading and you also read a few times and then come and read in the in the class so that one is you know where to punctuate second is the reading should be the reading should be comfortable to to others the very first day itself i wanted to say this but i thought some day you will because it is very very painful to keep telling these things at least to me as a person it is very very irritating to give these kind of these kind of things for we are talking about uh, the highest knowledge and these things we should be aware of are you able to follow shankar and i am saying this because some day everybody must read it's not only him it's not only it's not only, that's why i said it, it's not only for him everybody one one day one one person must take the the thing to to read this is called love this is called love because there is a group of people also listening and my concentration and my concentration capacity is so less and i do not know where to punctuate therefore i train myself to so i will make an effort to train before i read the text in the in the class in fact why i am openly discussing because shankar pleaded with me yeah he pleaded with me i don't know how many times he, he asked me sir can i read you are uh, you are reading and talking you are reading and talking you know you you you, you take a you you take a break i don't know why he thought i am a sick person but he thought i am a i am a sick person that i won't be able to do both therefore he pleaded with me saying <coughs> i will read i will read i will read i said okay read now that he is reading for a few weeks i know that he will continue to read now i am saying what you should do first you read a couple of times and then listen to the audio book and follow and then read it again and then when you come and read in the class what is the purpose of reading in the class even when others don't use the book i tried it today i closed to the book and i was trying to follow that's why somebody reads no even if the book is not there i should be able to it should make it should make sense to me in the way that he has written 
if i have if i close the book and i try to follow it was going it was going all over the place sir yeah shankar so come with this come with this preparation okay and then we'll uh, in the next class we'll continue with his his love sorry